and it's Gordo here from Gordo's Games and we're back for some Digimon TCG content today. Um, so first and foremost before we get into it I just want to say a big thank you to all. We have just recently hit our 400 subscriber marker which is a big milestone for us here um, and you know it's greatly appreciated. Obviously, well, we are going to look to try and change the content up this year a bit. We are diving into some of the TCGs, as well as looking at some of the more future content when it comes to Digimon. We are majority, well, mainly going to be a Digimon base content creators, but realistically, we will look at branching out otherwise just to try and give you all a bit of diversity with it all. So, if you like the content, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit that bell for notifications so you know when this content goes live for you. And without further ado, let's get into it. All right, here we are at the old faithful setup here. Um, disclaimer, there is a few additional cards in here which most likely will not even get looked at because they're just not relevant, uh, whereas some will do. So we're gonna start from uh, left to right and take it from there. So uh, first one for us is gonna be Imperial Jumon. Now I've got like three fighters here that were included and I don't even know why that happened. Um, realistically this deck doesn't really hold up in a current meta it can it is, it, it is basically a glass cannon if it goes off it can do a lot of work but I think there's just too much setup involved with it I won't consider it meme you can go with rogue if you want uh, for it but realistically it just doesn't have that level of consistency and speed because if you miss one one or two pieces it just uh, falls, falls short so easily um, so Kari here and Venus Mon, we've got security control realistically. There's a couple of different variants to it. You can go with a whole um, using the Karis to try and restrict how much memory they have, the Mimis and all that stuff. I, I think realistically, set card depend at this current point. I want to put. I'm going to go tier two. Um, actually, no. I'm lying here. I am going to put them up here in tier 1 actually because they still are a fundamental problem for some of the decks. Obviously going based on how this meta is looking to branch out because there's going to be so many uh, people playing into the top tier stuff uh, which we'll go through shortly. This has some okay matchups in those scenarios. Um, going on from that, Ancient Grey, oops, tier 2 maybe Rogue. I mean, it still has a very strong um, win, win condition. You know, if you get that stack built up, there is not a lot your opponent can do yet outside of block. But if you have piercing and then the blitz only to go with it, you know, you, you're in for GG, good game, that kind of stuff. So I'm, I'm going to say tier two for this one. War Green 1X, I mean, it has got access to the Green 1X now that, could be, that most people will be using in the Black War Green 1X. But the th I don't really think it gives this deck as much of a buff unless it starts going into using the BT8 Metal Grey more often. If you are playing a more control kind of variant for it, you might see a bit more benefit out of it. And you've got the Metal Grey X to stop being DD evolved. Um, I would say War Grey X falls into tier two at this point. Um, more so on the fact of it's just it's not as played as much in regards to um, some of the others. I mean, it saw a lot of play towards the end of uh, EX3 because of the fact that it did okay into things like Melgrin there. Um, but I think Blackwater X just takes the spotlight from it. All right, moving on, we've got Gallantmon. At this point, I'm sadly to say is it's not a strong enough contender. Um, it can't stick to a board very well unless you know, playing against a deck that massively trashes stuff to try and excel on, you know, just trash the security and going for game. It just, it can't come out, raise and do enough damage in one go to be considered an OTK deck. So until it gets its further support, I, I'm, I'm going to go rogue. I want to say meme, but I'm a Gallimon fan and that just hurts me saying that. So we're going to go rogue here. Uh, Melga, Melga's still up there as a tier one deck. Um, yes, its matchup isn't as great into Black War Grey X now, um, but it still does well in, thing, in regards to things like the Grandis matchup, 
and generally majority of the matchups because of how quickly it can go through security checks. Black War Grey X, if it gets ahead of it in pace alone, it can still win. But I think Black War Grey X speed in how it builds up with that with the win rate built into the Grey One X allows it just that little bit of pace to try and keep up. So it's up there as tier one. Um, but it definitely has lost a little bit of its oomph with one of the, the newer decks coming into the, into the uh, mix of things. Armor Rush. Armor Rush, I still, uh, it's a tier two deck for me. Now, obviously, it does well into Melga. Uh, you know, it, it came out as a, as a count Melga and that because of things like the Magna, being able to redirect swings, etc. Um, but I feel with the amount of Black War Grex is going to go around in this meta, the DDG Volver is going to hurt this deck far too much and you know unsuspend and delete the lowest play cost all that kind of stuff is really going to hinder this deck it may have the purge but being purged on repeat just by you know going to the next turn it's, it's not really going to put this in a strong position um, Grandis is tier 1 uh, fundamentally we're going to see so much of there's going to be the trio at the top, so we're, going to, we're just going to put the other deck with it now. Black War Grey X, Grandis and Malga, I feel like you're going to see these three the most of all. Purely on the back of Grandis beats Black War Grey, Black War Grey can beat Melga, and then Mel and Melga does well into Grandis because of the whole, you know, it becomes a blocker and you can detach the stop, the checks going through, well, being deleted, so it means the checks don't go through on it. Um, but that's the trio we're generally looking at. Um, Grandis is just a, a beast. The, the, the thing Grandis loses to is itself. If it bricks, it loses. If it doesn't brick, even things like security control. So you, you don't really need the heroes in this deck. You don't need the delicate plans because you can do that many consistent checks. But you can just repeatedly keep doing that. And security control has one, two things. It can't remove it or it can't recover enough quickly. Uh, can't recover quick enough. So Grandis itself surprisingly has a good matchup in various different places. So we would put that at tier one. Um, Alphamon. Alphamon, realistically the deck has a lot of things that help consistency wise the deck. Obviously the hit to Doro Grey um, really took it off the top spot, um, but it's still a strong deck to play. You know, it still has good, good consistency cards. You know, the UGs, the coaters, all these kind of things to help filter through the decks. The Dorian wants to extend out your turns. Um, so it is still a strong deck. Um, it just means playing into things like Grade Mon and that's a little bit more so. So I still think Alf Mon is up there. Not quite tier one, definitely uh, tier two. Um, but yeah, it's definitely playable. Uh, I've got a guy on one here, so you can, obviously everybody's going to be playing the Black Walker X version, but then there's nothing to stop anybody playing the old fashioned guy on one. Now, I do think Black Walker X is the more prominent way to play it because of the level of control this card offers, but if you are still looking to play an aggressive deck that still you know, makes use of things like the new Grey One X and stuff like that, guy on one as a key piece with Black Walker Grey is still overall strong. Uh, it'd be, I think it'd be tier two in comparison because I do think it struggles in um, Melga matchup still at the grandest matchup, whereas Black or Grey X has a little bit more of um, you know contendence at the top. So it'd be a tier two for me. Um, yeah, let's just put that in the bin for now. Obviously, there's new cross art stuff that says yeah, that's. We're not going to focus on this card as much anymore. Uh, Jesmon X Anti. Well, Jesmon GX, Jesmon X Anti will just encompass them all into one. Um, Still, there is a tier two deck for me. It's same problem. The same problem again is the fact is the deck is really really strong, but if it breaks, it severely runs out of gas and it gets steamrolled. But on the flip side of that is if it hits all its pieces, it can contend with quite a lot of these decks with the amount of aggression it has, uh, especially with the GX combos and the Ganku X, everything like that. Uh, Blue Flare. 
Now, personally, if any of you have ever watched this, my stream in that, or if anybody's anybody's been to one of our events, we know my passion towards blue is not a thing. And I would ha happily have a section that says just bin blue cards. Because I find it, for me, I find it to be a very, very simplistic and boring colour. <laughs> there is my, my opinion, there's my hot take. Um, scold me in the comments for that one. The blue flare. It's received some support. It's got Sorai, it's got the new Tamers in there. Um, but the problem is, things like Black or Grex just say no to it. Um, being able to redirect their swings, even if they, if you get stunned, you can still redirect with Black or X, if, as long as it's within its criteria, so it's the highest DP that's attacking. And that really does put a dampener on this deck's whole win con because it's stunned, swing, swing like with the metal greys a couple of times in that lot and it really does hinder the deck so I definitely, it's in tier 2 um, I think it's still a, a very strong deck and it still has a lot of good matchups but things like Grandis, Melgar if they just go off they run through it Blauger X has the control to deal with it and I think Set control isn't the worst matchup for it because of the fact of it can re just save things and keep repeatedly playing them out. So, could be a. Uh, no, we're going to leave set control there because I still think set control has generally better, more match. Uh, a few more better matchups overall. Uh, so, Kuya. Obviously, the deck got a hit from Sunrise Buster. Um, same with X4 here. It, it's an okay deck. It has some play, uh, you know, some tactics to win its matchups, but it still seems to be. I just don't think it has what it takes to keep up with so the meta currently. I am just gonna go and put it in meme. It sounds a bit harsh, but it, I, I that's gonna be the case for me. Uh, Dark Knight X Anti. I'm gonna go straight for Rogue here, just because I don't think a lot will play into this deck, but I do think you can catch a few people out. If you see, if you you know, if you're completely burning through your opponent's resources, like the level six and that, you can really start to slow it down. So it's a very grindy matchup. But if it gets to that point, this deck can really thrive. Um, the problem is now, obviously, one of the one of its good, better matchups used to be the whole guy on a black war grey because you just take that level six stack out, which meant the black war grey, you know, you'd run out of things eventually and it couldn't do a lot because if you don't have a level six in that deck, it's kind of shit. Um, but now with a Metal Grex anti, meaning you can't be de evolved, it allows you to stick to board more and not worry so much about this being played out to de evolve something, or to start at the level five Dark Knight being played out to de evolve something. Uh, Minerva. Minerva overall still a strong deck. Um, the Minerva loop, rare in that. Obviously the thing with it is it can break, it can be a risky uh, pickup choice. Um, but I do think he's in there as potentially a tier 2 deck. Uh, Bagra, yeah you can go there. Um, the Reaper. I'm going to go Rogue here. I mean generally it has some matchups that are okay for itself but I think with a set that's going to play a lot of Black War Grey X and it includes a lot of BT8 Metal Grey, I think this deck will struggle more times than none but you know if you manage to avoid that matchup you, it might not be the worst for you a well time gatekeeper on that really do pay off um, Chaos Jermon so Chaos Jermon, Machine Jermon, Mugen Jermon whatever you want to go by for it let's just rearrange some of these because that's definitely more how it looks um, the new support for Machine Jermon really does add a different element to the deck the whole analog man to kind of excel, you know, replace ultimate connection. Um, the BT11 machine drum on which on deletion, bottom deck and analog man, and you can play out a machine from hand. So you play out the EX1, and then you get all its, it, all its procs to put things underneath it. I think it's a generally an interesting deck and a fun deck to play. And if I, if, you know, if you haven't checked it out, there's a deck profile for it with the Ragnar combination as well, and I think it really does pay off. Um, Generally, it's a, it's a one of those decks that can catch people out, but it's hard to deal with because you have 
can't be bounced, can't be bottom decked, can't have its DP reduced. There's various different effects on that deck that stop removal taking place. That can't be deleted, another one. So I feel like there's definitely a place for it in the meta. Do I think it's going to be top tier? Most likely not because it can brick. That's a bottom line, it can really it can really brick and that really hurts the deck overall. But if you see your pieces, like any of these other high rolling decks, if you see the pieces, it can really pop off to the point of um, it does some interesting, interesting combos. Uh, Dorbic. Now I think with Dorbic there's more things that have outs to deletion. Um, you know, we've got the Machine Gemon here, we've got the Black Walker X with the Grey Mon X and that. You know, we've got the saves from Blue Flare. There's, there's our various different things that just kind of stop you saying you can outright delete this board. Um, and the Dorbic is great in that, so we, I think you're really going to have to play into more into the rush aspect of it, so you're trying to get as many security tactics in as you can. Um, I do, but I do think it would fall into more of a rogue pick this one. Overall, the deck is strong, and the deck's a lot of fun. I, I recall playing, I think it was Lychee's List, um, when, it, when it came out, and it's just that generally a fun deck to play. Um, Aegostromon. I'm pretty sure that's Uh Meme. Four Great Dragons. We're gonna go meme. I th don't. This one generally isn't, but um, I don't even think it fits into Rogue. It's, it's not even a pick. Uh, something I'd even consider to pick up to take to a competitive event. Probably the same as this, to be honest. Let's just uh, let's just insult Imperial more. Uh, Bloom Hydra. So every. Um, Every green player is going to be considering grandness to go against Black War Grey X. Um, but they do seem that a lot of people are loyalists towards the Bloom Hydra. And I think generally the deck has a good interest in uh, matchup within the metal. Because Bloom Hydra actually does well into Grandis. Um, Melga is a little different because of the fact of how many things get bounced and that you kind of lose your board presence there for the Hydramon effect as well as you know trying to retain the board for the Bloom Lord to get all the additional checks etc. And then Black Walker X is quite a 50-50 to the point of your deck's not tailored in some way to deal with wide boards massively. It can it can outpace Black Walker X and, and out control as well. So it's a very interesting matchup there. Uh, we've got Link Dragons. I want to go with a tier 2 with this one. I think the deck has a lot of interesting things for it. Um, some you know, some nice little traits like the not being able to digivolve on unsuspended Digimon, not being able to play a 5000 DP or less you know, on a lot of the triggers for the level 6s if you don't delete something. I think there's a lot of utility in that deck. Um, I don't think it's the quickest, so I do think it struggles just on pace wise to match some of these top tier decks. Um, but it has it has some things about it, like for instance the Bloom Hydra matchup. If you get the Volcanic Drummond second effect where it can't play out 5,000 less, it really hinders them. It's like having a Crimson Blaze just built in. So it's uh, generally a, a good solid deck. Pace and issue is definitely a thing for it. Uh, D Brigade. D Brigade, I'm not going to call it a rogue, but I will call it a tier 2 deck. Definitely think the deck stands up to quite a few matchups. It, you know, it's got a good amount of ship damage. It can. Uh, do the whole rookie rush thing from one side of it, but with the new stuff that came out with it, it really did. It did give it a whole other kind of, kind of gameplay to it where you can build the stack, get you know, spam the board with additional things, get rush, pop things. There's a lot, a lot of utility with the deck now. I feel so. I would put up in the tier, in tier two. X and one. This is a tough one for me because I feel like X and one has got a few good matchups like. Black Walker X, um, it can do it can do well into that, but it obviously depends on who high rolls the best because like someone like Grandis loses to the fact is that it can brick quite easily. And if you like, if you miss either of those level fives, it really puts the deck behind. Um, I would put it as a tier one deck. I think it's definitely up there. It definitely can stand with the best number of points. Like. Grandis has to raise that lots to go for turn, but if next one's already established there, then they're kind of screwed. Same, same for Melgra as well. You know, they raise out and they and they go for, they go for turn, but if if X one is by any chance ahead of them, 
it's going to put a, uh, a lot of pressure on them to uh, try and come back from this. So I've on it as tier one. I don't think it does very well into security control, to be honest. Um, that's, I mean, that's why I say security control has got a few interesting matchups overall. x one has got the evade and things like that, but I don't think it does enough. Um, Phoenix Mon. I would say this is so Phoenix Mon and Mars Mon using the uh, effects of things like uh, I think charges the new effect that goes with it all. Um, I think it will catch a few people off guard as it's a new deck. Um, can't quite say where I'd, I'd consider it a tier two or rogue, but I think rogue. I don't think it's quite the capacity of me because it does have some grounds where it may have good matchups. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how that one plays into the metal. Uh, X7. I want to say tier two for this one. Um, I feel like the deck has got a good base to it. You know the cross heart stuff for all the rookie rush stuff. You know with the uh, tamers playing out bodies and saving. There's a lot of features there that allow you to freely just throw bodies without any much worry about what's going to happen to them. Because unless there's you know heavy amounts of tamer deletion, you're going to retain those sources anyway. Um, and obviously that there's Black X, there's, there's a lot less focus on the Tamer Deletion overall. So it means you've got time to just swing, save it, swing, save it, all that kind of jank. All Force. I, this one's a tricky one. So All Force generally does have quite a good matchup into Black War Grey X. Um, but I, outside of that, it's... It's a very high rolly deck, I, I believe, because you still need to run a good amount of tamers to get to that point where it's, you know, you, you're in, you've got your win con set up. You need to have your arenas all set up, ready to go. And if you, if you miss any of those pieces, the deck just gets completely steamrolled. There's not much coming back for it. If you don't have any of the correct pieces, you can do one, two checks, and like try and get some poke, but you don't go for the whole combo, which is that full on OTK where you, where you can, you know, with the play down the arena, arena effect, play out another arena, so on and so forth, and you just repeat that until you push the game. So I think it's up there, but I would say it's tier two just on consistency level. Sukumon, this one is my road pick of the set. It's great against tower decks because, you know, changing anything into a Sukumon. That's the three K body. Why? So you can't digivolve on it. You can't do anything else with it, to be honest. Um, it can really catch people off guard, and I think it's going to be one of those to watch out for because, with the right pilot and with the amount of testing it, I think you can get to the point where it does hinder a lot of things, a lot of matchups, like potentially towards the top end of things. Um, the problem decks for things like Superman will be the standard OTK decks which just raise out wind which is gonna be like Grandis, Melga. Black War Grey does do the whole raise out wind but it tends to do it a little bit earlier than Grandis and Melga. They literally are raise out and they're most likely taking the game at that point. Whereas Black War Grey will raise out swing once or twice and continue to keep doing so or swing once and then trash one. So it's not a complete like OTK in one turn. Uh, Rusty. Um, I'm going to go meme. I have one of a guy on my team who absolutely loves dinosaurs and this card, and I want it to work for him. So I want him to prove me wrong. Um, but I just don't feel like the new Rusty does enough for the deck overall. I think the new Rusty comparison is very lackluster. I think keeping that that, that card to some level is the, the new Metal Tyranno that came out with it. Um, Mervamon. I think I put that up as towards the top end of tier two. Possibly, oh, uh, yeah, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna go with this one because I feel like with the right combinations, like Mervamon, whether you go cross hearts or if you go with a Bell Star, uh, Bell Star combination, I feel it puts on a lot of pressure. And having ridiculous amounts of retaliation and stuff like that can really cause a hindrance. Like, for example, Grandis wants to swing everything's clear aboard. Retaliation says no. Bloom Lord would like to swing through things, clear the board. Retaliation says no. Black War Grex, same thing. Yes, they have the protection clause, but they don't want to just use a protection clause just to swing some as retaliation in case they get hit by another one. Um, Melga, if they swing, you know, they'll bounce things. They won't necessarily swing into it. 
Um, but obviously when we're ever giving things blocker, if they can't bounce everything, it means they're just going to get taken out by some of retaliation. Um, Bagra. Well, we're just going to put that down here. I think it's had support, but it's not enough, to be honest. Uh, Mastay, I do think uh, Mastay, a fan amp fall down mode, all those kind of uh, variations, I think has a good place in the middle. Um, it's just going to be, I think, again, a pace an issue if you can keep up with everything. I think uh, finding a fall down mode particularly will do do well because that deck was generally quite quick overall, had a good uh, win con to go with it. But I think between that and Master, I think they'll both hold up pretty well in this overall meta. Because, um, I mean, Chaos the Grey is a strong card, Health Scythe is, and being able to cheat out the level 5 if you've only got one on board. And then going to the DNA Digivolve is. It's pretty, pretty good overall. Uh, finally, Galactamon. I, I want to say this deck's broke. I just, we've seen Eosmon before, you know, we've seen all that kind of stuff, and it's just like, we've seen D Reaper. D Reaper was probably the, stronger out, the strongest one out of all these kind of things that play multiples of the same card. Um, I could go rogue, I'm going to go rogue with it actually. I'm not going to go mean, but I'm not going to be horrible to it. Um, so, Blacktamon has a lot of Venmons, it's a lot of searches, there's a lot of stacking into the right things, but it generally has a game plan. But I think overall it is going to be one of those, it's far too slow to deal with the meta. And if you can't retain board with some of the stuff, it's just going to really going to cause hindrance for it. And there's too many things that just outright delete bounce or just clear but there we have it that's my bt11 tier list uh obviously thoughts opinions if there's any decks i miss by all means drop them in the comments below i'll uh i'll give you an idea of where i think they would go um but yeah i think it's looking to be an interesting matter overall um it, it's very clear they're a very popular deck that you're going to see and if you are going to think anything like finals or nets or anything like that, um, yeah, the, these are going to be your things to watch out for consistently. But these rogue matches, I still think some of them can catch people off guard. So, from my side of things here at Gordo Games, thanks for tuning in. If you did enjoy this, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications so you know when this content goes live for you. And then leave a comment below as to whether you agree with me or not, why you don't agree with me. Or just to tell me I'm completely wrong. Either or, thank you for stopping by.